this gentleman, this building is, and I'm going to show you another video outside. He is the closest guy to the spill. Not a resident, but he works here. And can you tell me um, how far do you think you are from, is this your property that where the oil spill was? Uh, yeah, this facility is on that property. All right, so you're on the property where the oil spill was, and d were you evacuated? No. Um, did Enbridge ever tell you that you should be evacuated? No. And uh, did you did they ever tell you about um, how bad the benzene was and the chemicals that can hurt you? No, they never informed us about any of that. All right, did they ever tell you that you are okay and don't worry about it? The Enbridge people didn't, but the people putting the canisters in the neighborhood said that there was zero toxicity levels and that the meters were reading practically nothing. Okay. And so we assumed it was safe. All right. Well, see, um, this is what they've been telling them. Well, is with documents that you have seen, everybody, you know that it was 1,700 parts per billion of benzene. Now, only six is legal. So we have EPA documentation to prove this. So when they're telling this gentleman that um, he is fine and the levels are safe, uh, they were 1,000 times more toxic than the legal level. Um, this gentleman here might get cancer in the fu future, and he might die 15, 20 years before his time. Um, this is very serious, and Enbridge never told this guy to leave. What do you, what do you think about this? Well, if what you're telling me is true, then, yeah, I think that was very wrong. Uh, uh, they should have informed us to leave if, uh, if the toxicity levels were where you said, you know, for the particular material that was uh, discovered here. So, um, yeah, it upsets me. All right. Now, they said on the 26th, um, you came here to work on the 26th, is that correct? Which would be that Monday? Yes. All right. So the documents I have, um, I have several documents, but the one that I've made public is where it's 1,700 parts per billion on um, July 30th, which is four days afterwards. So for four days, according to their documentation, you were in 1,000 times um, over the legal limit, um, just those four days alone, if you go by their documentation. Now, that's not counting after that. So for four days, you were in some of the worst chemicals known to mankind for oil. Hmm. I mean, are you worried? It concerns me. Uh, I, again, I had no idea. I mean, I felt lightheaded. I felt dizzy from it, uh, hard to breathe, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I, no one really seemed to express a concern that it was all that dangerous. So we did... Uh, closed facility here for a week the following week and then we were back in it again after that continuously. So he worked in those levels for over a week. Eight hours a day? Ten hours a day? Uh, nine hours a day. Nine, nine hours a day. Um, that's like sitting in your garage and turning on your car with all the carbon dioxide. Um, it's almost the same. Of course it's different chemicals but it does poison your body. One will kill you instantly, one will kill you in a longer period of time, but it, it will happen, um, at least from the information I've received and from um, what, who, the people I've talked to. Um, I want to thank you, and I will make this public, and hopefully uh, other people will see this and come forward. Thank you. Just to show you some EPA documents, all right? This is on 7-30-2010. Now, the spill happened the 24th, according to Terry. He said he smelled really bad smells. He smelled the benzene. He smelled the oil. He said two days before the official reports. The official report was 7-26-2010. Terry said he smelled it two days before that. All right, that building right there is the school. It's a sheet metal school for union members. And Mr. Edwards worked in there. This is how close he was to ground zero. Right there where all that water is, because right now it's rained a lot and the snow melted, that at one time was an entire pool or pond of pure sand tar oil. And the benzene levels were 1,700 parts per billion according to EPA documents. And he worked in this for several days and never was evacuated. This is how close he is.
and never was evacuated. She still thinks her house is worth more than that. Well, of course it is. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the reason why the appraisals are so low is because the oil in the area. Yeah. People don't want to live here now. So they hurt you. And because they're not going to give you the difference of what your house should be worth, they're screwing everybody. Do you want to say something? I mean, it's up to you. You don't have to, but if you want to, I'll sit I here and take much, my time. I pretty much said what you wanted to say, didn't I? Okay. Just more or less that we've been out house hunting, and the houses out there that are worth like 140 to 160000 She can't speak right now. That's what, when I'm asking her if she wants to talk, she's got a device that helps her. And, um... But her daughter's pretty much said everything that she wanted to say, so. Just more or less that she can't get something that's as nice as this without having to buy another house or without having to repair it. Either. Right. And you don't know what you're getting into. So was the smell pretty bad here since you were so close? Yeah, we after the one night, we were gone from our house for 39 days. A lot of people are sick around here. Some yeah. doctors are saying some people are getting cancer now. Uh, some miscarriages, mm -hmm. people believe that it was because of the um, oil spill and the benzene. Mm -hmm. So, scary. I don't know. It is. I wish I knew. I wish you could prove the stuff, but mm -hmm. that's what that's what they're, just like right now, Enbridge is in court trying to say that they don't owe nobody nothing. They are. are they? You know, they're going to lose, but that's what they're trying to say. After they testified um, at Congress and the Senate and stuff, saying that they're going to pay everything and they're going to take care of everybody, now they're trying not to. Because... They, that they're getting to the end of their money, yeah. and they're, I know they're nervous now. Well, do you know why they're buying the property? To save money. Yeah. They're not helping you by no. buying it. No, no. Because what, what, can, what can happen is if you sue and you get 50 grand, that's 50 grand they lose, and you keep your house and your property. Now, if you sell the property, they resell it to somebody else, and they make their money back. Right. So they actually profit sometimes in that because they're buying it at a lesser price because sure. lately they've been appraising everything at a smaller amount. Because? Because they want to make a little extra well, money. Well, they're paying different people for different things. So I think you're right. I'll just go back to that lawyer and say, well, look, do what you can. And so maybe I won't attempt to sell the property. So maybe I'll just sue them just because they pissed me off. Right. I keep the property. I don't really want to move. No, but that's 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 the thing. They don't want you to sue because you will keep the property and get it. You'll you'll get more than eight grand. I mean, you win a lawsuit, you're gonna get more than eight grand. That's all there is to it. And you keep the property. And if something happens with the water, they're still on the hook. Yes, that's true. That's what I'm concerned about. All right, this is Mike and Tammy. Um, I'm at Firekeeper's Casino. We were hanging out and. I walked up uh, on these guys, and they wanted to tell me something. Uh, what, what did you say about now that all the snow melted everybody, and so when it melted, um, what's going on with your area? Uh, what had happened is uh, with all the snow melting and a little bit of rain that we had, it's your fault, dude. we live uh, in Baker fault, Trailer Park, and uh, the water actually, when it, the river overflows, all the backwater comes up to our yard. We're 28 foot from the water, and uh, since this has happened, uh, we've both been terribly sick, coughing, hacking, having a hard time breathing, feeling dizziness. Dehydrated. Uh, there's a no number of things that we have symptoms that we've been feeling. In. <laughs> she almost dropped her drink, everybody. Um, so did, did you go to the doctors? No, I haven't. All right. Well, the, the, it's all like upper respiratory sinus. The sad thing is, if you go to the doctor, Enbridge will deny it's because of them, and they won't pay your bills. So, and I know you don't have, you know, insurance right now to pay for that. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, um, but Enbridge is really messing up big time because. Um, so you think your health's bad, and I mean, like because of the oil being closer to your house now again? Well, yeah, we have. Uh, I mean. When the oil spill had happened, uh, the water was up to me. And uh, like I said, I got to take measure with uh, crew. Pictures. Pictures saying we was only 28 foot from the water, and they haven't come to talk to us. And now Offer us anything. There was uh, yards posted saying, you know, inbreds, stay back, whatever. 
there were there, there were no there, there were no, no signs in our no yard. signs posted in ours, and we were They've right on the there. on the curb to where the river was. So. They've never been talked to us. So Amber never talked to you about it, and it was right next to your window. Right. They stuck a they stuck a business card in our door, and that was it. Wow. I guess they really didn't care. Do you th do you think because you were in a trailer park that made a difference? Oh, I believe so, oh, I believe so too. I believe so too. It's like they're they're looking down on us. So. Well. That's not right. No, and I, I'll put this video uh, on YouTube, and you know, the more that people understand what Embridge does to all the residents um, and how they treat people differently, um, that that just shows you what type of company this is. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, it's been a while since I talked to you, Mike. Anything else you want to say? Uh, I just, uh, I'm pretty fed up with it. Like I said, I don't think they're being fair at all. No, no we just, we just moved in. I mean, what, four months before the oil spill? Yeah, we. So, you know, it's we feel like, you know, we lost everything. We, lost we can't, everything. We can't we fish the river. Can't, can't take our kids back there. It was beautiful back there you before. Know about my animals. Right well. Now. One of the employees uh, from Embridge just told a resident today that the place is so full of fish that it's better than it used to be. What's your opinion on that? No. Uh, I believe that's no. got to be full of fish. Yeah. I believe so too. I've been in the river and there yeah, is we're no big fish. Fishermen, so all the they fish. Can't tell us that. Right. All the fish are dead, yes. and it's sad that these people lie to everybody. Well, it's it is. Sad. It is. They were supposed to come back and clean up the ground. And they still haven't been they back still, there. They still haven't been back there. And we've talked to the we've talked to the management of the trailer park, and they're they're really upset about it too. So. Because they told management they were going to come back and clean they it up. They said that they would be back to clean it all up, and. By the end of the month, and I can't remember what month that was, but it was quite a few months ago. That was uh, November, I believe. Yeah, we've heard the we've heard the boats going up and down, but what. What are they doing? I mean, they're just they're just stirring, they're just it, back stirring it back up. Right, and an airboat guy told me to my face that he was ordered to drive up and down the river to sound like he's doing something. I believe it. I believe it. In the helicopter. It. So you've ne you've never seen him work? No. Uh, since, uh, it, was <laughs> it was September. It was September 27th, I think it was. Was I think I remember the date that you guys said that it was their last day of work. Yep. There has been a few boats up and down the river, but no cleaning. No cleaning. No cleaning. I, I haven't even heard them shut off the boat. So that means they're just going right on by all of the oil that's sitting in your backyard? Yep. All right. Well, thanks for the info, and I'll, I'll make sure everybody hears about this. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. What do you think about what I'm doing? I love I it. I love it. <laughs> you love it. We're on your side. <laughs> all right. Well, for sure. Thank you. You have supporters. I appreciate that. Just uh, pass out my videos, you know, to everybody. That's important, and talk about it. The more people that know about this, the safer I am, um, and because more people will be looking out for me, right. and the uh, the better the residents will be because everybody's doing something about it. Well, you can count on us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. John Blowing Ball, March 26, 2010. Just showing you, this is the swamp area. For eight months, they did not clean this area eight months I complained over and over again it took tons of complaints to the press to the commissioners to the city council and guess what Embers kept saying that they weren't gonna clean this up well I made them clean it up they are out here only because of my complaints and it's costing them a fortune they had to build an entire road to get back here. This is very, very expensive. This is why they leave areas. This is why they don't clean up areas. It's money. It's all about money. Are you an Embridge worker or a house owner? I'm the owner. All right. Well, um, have you ever seen me before? No. John Blowenball. I've been on every news station, three, eight. I used to work for Embridge. They told us to cover up oil. The only reason they're in your backyard right now cleaning it up is because of me. So they didn't want to do it. I'm, I'm making them. Oh, well, I, I live in um, the river. Wow, so you went to the EPA. And you well, I called my rep, and we walked back there. With, they brought the DNR, DNRE or whatever, and uh, they did test because EPA passed it or something. And Why do you think EPA passed it? I have no idea. Does that make sense? 
know. <laughs> you ain't.